Have you ever been confused by the snapping features in Cakewalk or wondered why the inspector shows exactly the same thing as the console at times? Well, let me help you out. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. I have even more Cakewalk secrets that you should know about. Whether you're a complete beginner or an old time walker, I reckon there is something here for everyone. Let's start off with a little curiosity in the inspector view. So perhaps you've been using the console view, which you can see here in Cakewalk, and you've also had the inspector open over here on the left-hand side. And you've noticed that as you select different channels in the console view over here, that over in the inspector, that channel that you've selected is also shown here, along with any bus that it's routed to, okay? Often that will be the master bus. In this case, for these drums, I've got it going to a drum bus. And it may have occurred to you, hey, what's the point of me selecting something here and it's showing exactly the same thing over here? This is kind of a duplication there, which doesn't seem very helpful. Well, it isn't very helpful if they both show exactly the same thing. But the point is, is you can get them to show slight variations of the same thing. Now you do that by changing the way it's shown in the inspector with this little menu down at the bottom left, which you may have missed where it says display. If we select this now, for example, we get a whole bunch of things that we can include or exclude. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna get rid of the sends. I don't need to see them here, okay? I can just control my sends over here but what do I want to show in its place well in this case I'm going to go down to display I'm going to go to module options then I'm going to go across to effects and I'm going to click on show assignable controls what are assignable controls these are sort of quick access controls to um, attributes of a plugin in this case it's the sonatus compressor which I've got on this guitar track and rather than have to double click on this or click on it and open it up and uh, go to the different options here I've got quick access to the attack the release the knee here now i may not want to show this all the time over here in my console view but it's really handy isn't it that i can do that um, i can have that available with any tracks i select over here okay so now we've got something different going on let's have another example let's go down to display at the bottom here and let's look at more options and then meters okay we'll go to meters and i'll go to playback playback meter options now in the main console view it's showing this it's showing the peak uh, metering let's change that to rms metering okay and in fact let's just for fun go in there again go across to more options meters um, and go to oops, sorry playback um, and go to hold peaks as well okay so now when i play this track and you'll see the guitar plays the metering is different. Over here, we have peak metering. Over here, it's RMS metering. It's showing the kind of average, if you like. So you can use your own imagination here. Uh, decide what you want to show in each of these two different places, but do make them different so that one of them at least becomes useful. Now, this next tip was inspired by a post in my Cakewalk Facebook group by a member called Lee Jackson. Now, before we get into that post, if you're not a member of that group yet, follow the link in the description down below and join up right away. Why? Because it's full of really helpful people people who are willing to help you when you're stuck whether you're a beginner or whether you're an advanced user it doesn't matter it's a great place really really friendly so follow that link down below now lee jackson was mentioning that although he'd used cakewalk since 1993 he'd slightly embarrassingly only just discovered some of the docking features and he asked me to include this with one of my tips videos so here it is now if you already know everything there is to know about docking then this is a great opportunity for you to leave a comment down below and say hey thanks mike now i feel really smug go on do that now let's find out about docking now before i get into docking i think there's a couple of things i'd like to mention about the interface it's very kind of modular there's lots of things that you can customize with it there's lots of things that you can show and hide on the fly depending on what you're working on and i just want to touch upon those things quickly before we talk about how to dock those things now if you want to show different things, you can, of course, simply go up to views here and then just, you know, click on one of these things here. But it's really handy to learn at least sort of 
three or four shortcuts which I'm going to show you now. First of all, if you want to show the inspector, press I for inspector. That's going to show the inspector. Saves you having to use your mouse go up to that menu. You can just show and hide it to your heart's content using that keyboard shortcut. Likewise, if you want to show the browser, think of B for browser, and that's going to show the browser over there on the right hand side. Now, a couple of less obvious ones which are very, very useful would be Alt and two so alt two shows the console you can see that appears at the bottom there and also alt three shows the piano roll view now you'll notice with those two that they've both appeared um, in what's called the multi-dock we can switch between them with these two tabs here at the bottom here or however many you've got open is the number of tabs there and you can just easily access them from there now the multi-dock implies that things can be docked there that means those things can also be undocked. One of the easiest ways to um, undock something from the multi-dock is just to grab that tab there, yeah, just uh, left click and then just drag away and you can undock, in this case, the piano roll view, okay? Now, if you double click on that taskbar, you can bring it up to full screen, very, very handy, or if you happen to have a second monitor, then you can drag it off to that second monitor. That's extremely handy indeed and can make sure that you're making great use of your screen real estate. Now, there's different ways that you can redock it. You can drag it around the screen. So if I drag it to the bottom here where, where the multi-dock is, you'll notice that I get this lovely blue highlight to let me know I can dock it there. I just release and there it is back in the multi-dock. What about docking options for things like the browser? So I'll press B. To open the browser now you'll see at the top of some of these sort of panels these docking option icons okay so this one simply undocks it yeah and here it is and now we can drag that browser around and again as we take it to different parts of the screen where it can be docked they get highlighted in blue. So we can put it back over here on the right hand side where it came from. If we sort of move it around, you'll see there's different options for the top area, um, sometimes for the bottom area of that as well. And then also on the left hand side, we could drop it there as well if we wish. Um, also, if we go to the top of these panels, um, we have this little drop down here, docking options. That's another way to change its position. So I could dock it at the right here, click on that, and it goes over to the right. Just experiment with this. As I say, you can put it in different places. So I could even have this browser view over here. Um, I've got it on instruments at the moment. I could undock it and I could even put it in my multi-dock at the bottom, for example. Let's just put it there. I've dragged it there and I have that available down there. So you've really got a lot of options. You can easily switch things off and on, as you can see, and you can also have things in the place where you want them. So this tip is more of a safety tip. Now, in order for this to work, there's something I want you to have in place if you can. That is this, save your projects to a different drive to your system drive. Now, mostly on Windows, the system drive is drive C. So I encourage you strongly, always save your cakewalk projects on a separate drive. It can help with, it, with performance, but it also helps when you have catastrophic system failures. Sometimes a C drive will become corrupt, unusable, what have you. Now you can lose your Windows system drive and often you can get things back gradually. You can reinstall Windows, reinstall your software. But that hard work you've put into your cakewalk project is hard to get back. So make sure you save your cakewalk projects on a separate drive wherever you can. Now that may be an internal drive or you may have an external drive if your laptop's only got one drive, for example. But please try and do that. Now this tip that I'm about to give you kind of depends on that slightly for it to work. I'm going to talk about um, uh, file safety in terms of presets for plugins, okay? So I've got a plugin open here on a vocal channel and I happen to be using um, this VX64 Cakewalk plugin. It could be any other VST plugin. It doesn't really matter. Now, it's got lots and lots of presets here. If you go to the top uh, left, I can select some of those presets. Fine. Now, you can also make your own presets. Yeah, so I may have fiddled around with the controls and I've found something I really like. And what I do is I just double click up here where we see the preset name. Yeah, and I'll, I'll change this to Destroyer 
uh, mic here okay destroy a mic that sounds odd and i'll just uh, press enter so that's there and then i'm just going to click on this little floppy disk icon how cute a floppy disk uh, to save that okay now what that means is is that preset is now available here um, from that preset menu as i as i can see here so destroy a mic is there now that's going to become a, or that's going to be available in all other projects for this particular plugin the problem is going to be if i do have a catastrophic c drive failure those presets will often go with it okay and when you get back to using your project if you're making use of those presets at all that can be a bit of a pain to set them up again so what i like to do and i think is a really good idea is go over to this menu here in this case i'm using a vst2 i'll click on that down arrow i'll go to save preset then I would navigate to my project folder. I'm already there in this case, but you can see I'm here. It's the, the project's called Only Yesterday. I'm there already, and I'm going to save that preset. Okay, let's just call it by its name. What was it again? Uh, oh, God, that's a lot of typing for me. We'll just call it Dest Mic, okay, for Destroyer Mic. I'll just click on Save. Now, that is safely there in my project folder. So if I have that system failure, but at least I've saved my projects on a separate drive. I've got a really good chance of having that preset available to me again. I can get up and running and using it right away. Now, snapping is incredibly useful, but it can be a little confusing in Cakewalk if you don't fully understand how it works. Now, most of the confusion is going to stem from the fact that we can have global snap settings, but we can also have individual snap settings for each of our piano roll views. Let's start off with the default situation, the global snap settings and where the piano roll view is going to follow that. So we access our snap features at the top of our interface. You can see it here and we can turn snap off and on by clicking this icon or by pressing n on our keyboard okay now we can also change the snap resolution we can do that by long pressing here on this drop down menu and we can either have a resolution based on sort of uh, note or measure resolution so we've got quarter notes selected here or we could do it based on ticks samples frame seconds etc we'll go back to smart grid at the end now at the moment i've got it set to quarter notes so as you'd expect if i I grab this guitar clip here and I start to drag it around it snaps to those quarter note positions very very handy indeed now if I go down to my piano roll view for that same guitar part there and I start to drag a note around you will see it does the same thing it snaps to those quarter notes just as I have it set so if I now change that to uh, half notes then um, at the top with the clip it's going to do drag or so it's going to snap based upon half notes let's just do that yep and then if we go down to the bottom again we're just going to select an individual note we'll do that here and again it snaps now to half notes pretty obvious so far right okay so where does the confusion come from well in the piano roll view we can actually make it do or behave slightly differently if we go to the top right of the piano roll view you'll see, view, you'll see a grid there now if yours is orange already that means you already have uh, the snap options for the piano roll view selected and that's why you may get a different behavior down here in that view to the way you do at the top let's turn it on and then we can see it's options have appeared so you can see it's set to uh, 16th triplets let's just change that to something a bit more realistic say 16th notes here i'll change that now as i drag that note around in my piano roll view it snaps to those 16th now you you'll notice that my grid lines actually changed there as i was doing that yeah, if i change to a different setting you can see the grid lines have changed we'll get back to that in a moment but what i want to demonstrate here is if i do have this set to 16th for those notes to be snapping to 16th still when i drag the clip around at the top here it's still snapping to halves okay and that's because i have half set up here okay so we have individual separate settings there that can be very very handy or very confusing if you don't realize that is what is happening now let's go back to those grid lines so as i said it's really handy as i change this here to different settings my grid lines have changed to reflect where the notes are going to snap to what i'm going to do is go over to the right hand side of the piano roll view click on view 
and go down to these a uh, couple of options at the bottom here first of all show vertical grid lines it's handy to have that on so i've just switched it off there i'll have it switched on now the second option i want to show you when i go to view here is to go down to grid resolution and i have follow snap setting selected that's why the grid changed every time i selected uh, a new snap setting okay now you don't have to do that you can have it fixed if you just want to always show say 16th you can have that selected and then as i change to different snap settings um, that grid will now remain the same okay so you choose which is best for you but just so you know that's how you make that happen now one of the last things i want to talk about um, is to do with snap to and snap by i have it set to snap to at the moment you can see the switch for that at the top snap to means that everything's going to snap to a grid line uh, according to the snap setting snap by means it's going to snap according to that setting by that amount not to the grid line what does that actually mean <laughs> well i find it most useful often i've got to say when i have audio tracks although it does apply to midi as well let's have a look at this guitar track i've got in blue here um, it appears doesn't it on face value to be starting at the beginning of that measure but if i zoom in using control and the arrow key and i zoom right in you can see actually it starts just after the measure yeah or oh, sorry before the measure now i've got the clip cropped which we'll often do to get rid of the silence but i've cropped it to where the sound actually begins now often audio is not that accurate and sometimes you do want that guitar sound to be just slightly before or whatever instrument is just before that beat now if i have it set to snap two and i'm snapping say by um, quarter notes here i grab that i'll drag it along over here so i'm not really zoomed out enough to show this i'll zoom out again control okay now you can see it is snapped over there yeah to those notes to that quarter note there and if i zoom into that i'll just move my playhead over there and zoom in you'll see that actually this guitar now starts exactly on the grid line i didn't i don't want that to happen okay now my guitar could either slightly sound well it would sound slightly out of time that could be irritating it's not what i wanted so i'll undo that so it's back to its original position yeah and what i'm going to do is change this snap to buy i'll click on the switch up there and now what i can do is drag that across it will snap but you'll see it keeps its relationship to the bar lines that's the effect of having that by selector switch up there very very handy indeed if you want to do it in the piano roll view just go to your options over here at the top right of the piano roll view and you'll see that that option is in there snap to or snap by those are the main things that i find useful about the snap feature is there something in this video that you didn't already know about and you've been using cakewalk for absolutely ages let me know in the comments down below about that i love hearing these stories from people sometimes they've used it for decades and these videos have helped them to discover something which is really helpful now if you want to find out something else which is really helpful then you should watch the whole series of these videos i've put them together in a playlist and you can access that by clicking right here on this thumbnail i bet there's something else you didn't already know about